Before I introduce myself to you fully then, tell you a little bit about me, can I wish you all a very good afternoon and ask you how you're all feeling? Oh, wow. Brilliant, that was an awesome response. <laughs> it was a very mixed response. Some of you said all right, some of you said good. Some of you made a strange kind of gurgling noise. Some of you looked at me and going to punch me in the face. I can take it. That's me, let's go. Right, okay. Uh, Like I say, my name's Gavin. Uh, I'm 33 years old. I know you're all looking at me now thinking, my God, he looks amazing for his age. <laughs> thanks. <laughs> thanks, thanks for your support today. Uh, I live in Edinburgh. I'm not from Edinburgh. I'm from the west coast of Scotland. I'm from a tiny little town called Troon. Anybody ever been to Troon? Who said yes? You did. What's your name? Hi, Jennifer. Why have you been to Troon? A golf event. Very famous, of course, in Troon for its golf. <laughs> no, it really is. It has a championship course, and it's also very famous for its 27 retirement homes. So uh, that was no slight at you, Jennifer, at all. You're, of course, young and beautiful. Uh, I'm going to keep digging, I'm sorry. Uh, of course, um, I left Troon when I was 18, headed to Aberdeen University, where I spent four years training to become a primary school teacher. Learned very quickly that I didn't want to be a primary school teacher. <laughs> Learned very quickly that small children do, in fact, freak me out. <laughs> they stink. <laughs> and uh, I hate them, so let's move on. Now, <laughs> one or two of you looking slightly concerned. <laughs> I don't actually hate small children. That was a joke. Uh, I have my own children, which probably scares you more. <laughs> Uh, I have a son who's five. His name is Kean, and uh, I found out recently that's the same name as one of the guys out of Westlife. Gutted. <laughs> I wanted to call my son Optimus Prime, but I wasn't allowed. And I have a wee girl called Ellis who's only one, so feeling very grown up at the moment. So grown up, in fact, I bought a shed. Now, um, I uh, training as a primary school teacher. I always remember arriving in a school for the first day, 18 years of age. On my first placement, I was absolutely terrified and hugely excited all at the same time. I was very passionate about going into education. I wanted to make a difference. I used to think it was really cheesy and embarrassing, but I learned over time that there was no other reason to go into to any type of education. And uh, I was met by the head teacher at the door, and she said, are you our student son? And of course, being called son on your first day makes you feel very grown up. And I said, yes, that's me, lady. And, uh, and she looked me up and down and she said, male. I didn't know if I was meant to show myself. <laughs> so I did. Uh, and and uh, I never taught again. No, uh, that's, that's not true. Uh, I said, yes, I'm male. She said, right, don't you forget your first rule of teaching, son. And I said, what's that? And she looked at me right in the eye and said, don't smile till Christmas. And I can honestly tell you it's the most horrific piece of advice I've ever been given in my entire life. Never give anybody that piece of advice, especially if you're going into work with young kids. We have to smile, always. Um, and of course, I was met by a teacher at the door, and uh, she said, come and sit in the staff room. And I was sitting there all on my own, feeling really nervous, and then in walked Mary Poppins. Every school has a Mary Poppins. <laughs> they float into the room with rays of light coming out their face. <laughs> You've obviously been taught by her. And she floated up to me and said, are you Gavin? I said, yes. She said, come on, you're with me. And off we floated together <laughs> down the corridor to the nursery where I had an absolute ball. I played and I played and I played. And then at quarter to 11, it was playtime. <laughs> I rediscovered the water area, the sand area, the reading corner, and the greatest book of all time. The Very Hungry Caterpillar. Some of you might be excited to know that you can now buy that in black and white with a packet of crayons. And you colour it in. <laughs> all by yourself. And I rediscovered something that I'd forgotten all about. I was 18 and I'd forgotten how to play. And so many of us have. We get to a point in life so quickly where we've forgotten how to play. So let's play right now. I'm going to shut my eyes 
and I'm going to count to ten. And you're going to hide. <laughs> no, you really are. <laughs> I might even cover my eyes and peek when I get to seven. <laughs> the rules are you're not allowed to leave this room. Yes, we're really doing this, people. <laughs> you're not allowed to leave this room at all. The person who hides the best, well, you win, because we'll probably never find you. Because <laughs> I've only got six and a half minutes left. The person who hides the worst, you're buying the first round. Straight after this. And when I say the first round, I don't mean between you and I, I mean every single person that's in here. I'm going to shut my eyes and count to ten, and we're going to play the best goddamn game of hide and seek you've ever played in your life. If you've never played hide and seek, you've got exactly ten seconds of me counting to Google it and get running. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. <laughs> I think the phrase at this point is, here I come, ready or not. So I'll see you later then. Thanks very much. Do you know what I have to say? Giddle's right at the front here. I found you. <laughs> Everyone else, you can come back to your seats now. Give yourselves a round of applause. <laughs> Whoever's on the camera, please tell me you got that. <laughs> It'll be one of those moments that people will speak about and they'll go, yeah, whatever. <laughs> Do you know what? I have been in a dilemma all morning about doing this. I was thinking, can you get away with a game of hide and seek with 300 people at a TEDx conference? Uh, turns, turns out the answer is yes. Uh, I think you're absolutely wonderful. Do you know, it's interesting how you respond to that. You know, most of you just went for it. I shut my eyes and all I could hear was running. And I'm thinking, I said you can't even leave the room. I'm thinking, where are you running to? There's nowhere to run. Brilliant. One or two of you did look at me as if to say, oh, how childish. <laughs> and the only thing I can say is it's not childish. Why? Why did it get to a point when people believed that playing hide and seek was childish? It's not childish. It's wonderful. Think back to when you were five years of age and somebody handed you a cardboard box. What did you do with it? We can have some quiet time if you want. <laughs> Maybe you're just exhausted from hide and seek. What did you do with that cardboard box? Absolutely, you got in it. You lived in it. <laughs> you played, you flew it, you drove it, you wore it, you defended it, you ate it. <laughs> it was the ultimate play thing. I wonder when the last time was you played in a cardboard box. It might have been last night, I've absolutely no idea. <laughs> After what's just happened, it was probably out there at lunchtime, I don't know. When was the last time you looked at a cardboard box and then looked at a staircase? <laughs> and then pulled this face. <laughs> and then took that box to the top of those stairs and get in that box and slid from top to bottom while shouting the word we. <laughs> I'm guessing for some of you it's been a long time. Wonder when the last time was you ran in from school or uni or work, dived onto your bed, rolled yourself up and shouted, quick, come and look at me, I'm a sausage roll. Doesn't matter what your job is. Even if you report for the Royals, I expect you to do this this evening. <laughs> In fact, there's your homework. No, I'm looking at you, it's not just you, everybody. You get home tonight or next time you're at work, get in, dive onto your bed, roll yourself up and shout, quick, come and look at me! Even if you don't live with anyone, someone will come running eventually. <laughs> and I'll say to you, what is it? And you just lie there and say, I'm a sausage roll. <laughs> look at their face! Especially if you've run into the wrong house. <laughs> You're going to freak someone out. <laughs> Think back to when you were about seven years of age and your teacher gave you a reading book that you had read the year before. How did it make you feel? I'll tell you how it made the seven-year-olds feel the first time I made that mistake. Furious. 
They were absolutely furious with me. Why? Because at the age of seven, we want nothing more than to be moved up a reading level. We want nothing more than to, to, to have our classmates see and hear and acknowledge that we've been moved up a reading level. And we want nothing more than that than to go home that night to our mums and dads and show them that reading book and show them what we've achieved. Another thing that amazed me about being a primary school teacher was that moment when I'm sat at my desk doing my work and all of a sudden there's a queue of children stood beside you with an open book and a smile on their face and they're saying the following words, I'm finished, what's next? Every day as a primary school teacher, my mind was completely and utterly blown by the need, the desire, the want, just that absolute enthusiasm to learn and develop and progress but not just that, to enjoy every second moment of it. The problem is, sometimes when we get into our teens, we lose something really special. And that something special is that wee piece of magic. It's that wee piece of magic that we're all born with, that too many people in this world have now lost. And we need to get it back. I see it in my son every day. He turned five about three weeks ago. He ran into our room at four o'clock in the morning recently, shouting, Dad! And I panicked. I leapt, I didn't even touch the bed, I just leapt out the bed, landed like a ninja, because this is how they land. <laughs> I said, what is it? And he did this. <sighs> I know why they're called eyeballs. magic. Not only did he have a moment, it didn't matter that it was four o'clock in the morning, he's had a moment, he's realized something absolutely incredible. Not only has he had a moment, but he's had to share it. And that's what we do. Well, he was four at the time, that's what we do when we're four. We find out new exciting things and we go share it. And that's why I love coming to events like this. It's a chance for people just to get up and share their stories and for us to learn something from it. We were having a dinner one night in fact, we do that most nights. <laughs> and there was broccoli on the plate. And I had a moan. I don't mind broccoli, but I had a moan. And my son said, but dad, broccoli's great fun. I'd never heard that sentence before. <laughs> he said, look. And he held up a piece of broccoli and he said, summertime. And then he bit the top off and he said, autumn. Genius. <laughs> he was four. <laughs> and you know, even in times of sadness, times of loss, at the age of four, as he was, we have an ability to flip things on its head and see the world in a whole different light and put things back into perspective and put a great big smile back on our face. I lost my dad last year, uh, last March. My dad died after a, an amazing battle with pancreatic cancer. And it was tough. Do you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not the only person to have lost a parent. I certainly won't be the last. But see, when you've got a four-year-old son who understands what's happened but doesn't understand what's happened, it's really difficult. And see, on Christmas Day, see, when you're sat there with that empty chair in your mum and dad's house that's been filled for the last 33 Christmases with your dad, it's really difficult. And you're sat there, nobody wants to say anything about my dad in case it upsets my mum. But somebody needed to say something. And up spoke Kean. His hands on his hips. I'm sad, you know. And I said, what are you sad about? And he said, I miss Grandpa. And I said, I miss him too. And I thought, we might as well have this conversation. I said, what do you miss about him most? And he went, oh, never mind that, Dad. Do you want to see me draw an apple? <laughs> and I learned, if you're ever feeling down about something, you just go and draw an apple. <laughs> and Joe, we, best, we drew the best apples you've ever seen in your life. And it took my four-year-old son to break that ice, flip it on its head, and put a great big smile back on everyone's face. And we sat, and we laughed, and we joked, and we remembered, and we celebrated. At the age of three, four, five, we have an ability to bring an absolute piece of magic to the table every single second of our day. And too many people grow up far too fast in this country and become adults. We become grown-ups, and we get stuck in a part of the brain, and we forget that it's okay to have fun at school. It's okay to have fun at college and at uni, and it's okay to have fun at work. Those of you with jobs, I wonder when the last time was you had a game of TIG. 
Again, it might have been yesterday. I have no idea. <laughs> Those of you in uni, I wonder last time was you the game of TIG. Go up to someone on Monday, wherever you work or go to, go up to someone on Monday and just say to them, how's your weekend? Yeah, mine was great. TIG, you're it, and run. <laughs> I expect to see you on the telly doing that, <laughs> walking up to Middleton. And if I don't see that, I will be disappointed in you. <laughs> uh, at the very least, folks, uh, I hope I've given you a little bit of food for thought this afternoon. Uh, I, I, I didn't have a huge amount of time to, to speak today, and uh, it was just an honor to be asked to come and, and close this event. So thank you very much for having me. And um, before I go, some of, you, some of you may have noticed that for the duration of my talk, I've been wearing a cape. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Thank you. <laughs>